All right. Thank you, worship team, for leading us in that incredibly beautiful, intimate time of praise to our God and our King. That was amazing. My name is Ashley Wilson. I have the honor of bringing you this week's Torah portion. Tatsria means she conceived. This covers Leviticus chapters 12, verse 1 through 13, verse 59. And this Torah portion covers the sacrifices and offerings for women after childbirth and the instructions for leprosy, how to quarantine and diagnose uh, leprosy. It is always an honor to share my heart and what the Holy Spirit teaches me through these Torah portions. Uh, but honestly, some of them are harder than others. And this week's portion is one of those. We are so far removed from the time and place in which these commands were observed that understanding the why or trying to feels a little bit like mental gymnastics, especially in the case of these offerings, this time of uncleanness for women who have given birth. It's far easier to understand why a person with suspected leprosy would need to be quarantined. Uh, we certainly wouldn't want disease to be spread through the community. But why a woman must bring a sin offering, these are the scriptures that can really trip people up and make them misunderstand God's heart and design, especially as it relates to women. So of course, these are the eight verses that I want to focus on today. So we are going to read Leviticus chapter 12. It's a short one, just eight little verses. Then Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, instructing, If a woman conceives and bears a male child, then she will be unclean for seven days, as in the days of her blood she will be unclean. In the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin is to be circumcised. She must wait during the blood of purification for 33 days. She is not to touch any holy thing, nor come into the sanctuary, until the days of her purifying are completed. But if she bears a female child, then she will be unclean for two weeks, as in her blood, and she is to wait in the blood of purification for 66 days. When the days of her purification are completed for a son or for a daughter, she is to bring to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting a year-old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering. He is to present it before Adonai and make atonement for her. Then she will be cleansed from the discharge of her blood. This is the law for, who, for her who gives birth, whether to a male or female child. If she cannot afford a lamb, then she is to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. Then the priest will make atonement for her and she will be clean. The first thing that many people notice is that the scripture requires a sin offering to be brought after 40 days for a son and 80 days for a daughter. Uh, as I was doing some reading on this, I found that in the Talmud, it postulates that perhaps this is because during labor, she may have cursed her husband or made a vow to never let him touch her again. And so the sin offering is to... Uh, nullify these things that she may have done during labor, which is kind of ridiculous. And it's funny, but it's not really what the purpose of those offerings is. Pastor Matt has taught before that sin offering here is better translated as purification offering. And in the greater context of the commands pertaining to uncleanness, this makes sense. There are many things that can make a person unclean, such as blood and birth and postpartum are bloody. And as a reminder, being in a state of uncleanness is not a sin. So we can understand that a woman would need to make the proper sacrifice to be renewed into that clean state again. To further drive home that point, we read in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 24, that Yeshua was brought to the temple by his mother, Mary, who was there to bring the purification offering. Certainly, she was not in sin for bringing the Savior of the world into the world through childbirth. And I'd also really love to point out here that Mary brought 
a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. The sacrifice is allowed for someone who was too poor to bring a lamb. The sacrifice of the lamb would come 33 years later. But I love that God is not concerned with the value of the offering. He didn't require more than what a person could give. And he didn't make it a burden for poor families to obey the command to be fruitful and multiply. But back to the scripture, we can have a basic grasp of why the purification offering was necessary. Blood makes a person unclean, okay? But here's where another big hangup can happen. The time of purification for a son versus a daughter. And this is where I'm going to venture away from what I feel like is a fairly plain reading of scripture and its purpose there, and into commentary, my own opinion, and what this tells me about the heart of my God. There are many who will read this passage, and they will see the longer time of purification as a negative thing, akin to a punishment for having a daughter instead of a son. And I was once one of those people. I didn't understand why a girl would make me more unclean. I have eight children. I have three sons and I have five daughters. I've given birth eight times. I can tell you that birth and postpartum is not affected by your baby's gender. It is all messy and bloody and full of God's mercy and grace. So why? Why the double amount? Why the double days of purification? Now your theology, your understanding of God will very much inform how you read this. And it has very much informed now how I read this. And I would like to submit that the longer time of purification was a gift. It was a way to bestow value and worth to daughters in a culture that favored sons. A longer time of separation would mean more rest for the mother, more time being cared for by others, more time away from their usual duties. And as a woman who has had eight babies, Time is a gift and a blessing. Rest is a gift and a blessing. I am learning more and more just how much God values his daughters. And I believe that these eight verses are just a small window into God's heart, showing his love and care for his girls in a culture that didn't view them as equals. Even today, there are many who value women less than men who see women as a second class, less than. If you don't believe me, post something on Facebook about the value, worth, and purpose of women and watch the wolves descend. But remember that our God is not a respecter of persons. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, since you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's what we read in Galatians. I would really love to leave you with this thought today. Woman was not created second because she was an afterthought or less than. Woman was created second because creation was not complete without her. Shabbat shalom.